So in this last video, we're going to be familiar with the fact-based model for representing data, and we're going to look at the graph scheme for capturing the structure of a data set. So in the other videos, we've talked about what big data is and some of the problems, and we've said that we can't really represent big data in the traditional relational databases. When talking about big data, fact-based modelling gets you to deconstruct all the data you're storing into fundamental units called facts and places these facts into what we call a master data set. Now the important thing about these facts and this data set is an, it's an ever-growing set. It's immutable and the facts are atomic. So the data set is only ever getting bigger and bigger. When you put something in there it can't change. So if a piece of data has to change a new version is added with the correction which means you've got a complete history and each of the facts at its lower level are storing one piece of information. So these are the principles then of a fact-based modelling. The raw data, as we've said, is stored as atomic facts. We never have more than one fact stored together. Facts are captured one single piece of information. These facts are immutable and they're eternal and this is due to a timestamp. So the facts can't change, and when they're entered, you give them a timestamp. And each, in each fact is easily identifiable by the timestamp. And what this means is by querying, we can easily find duplicates. So that's all very well, but what therefore are the advantages of doing a fact-based modelling system when you're talking about big data? Well, the first thing is simplicity. We don't need to index everything. When adding new items to big data, and you could be adding an awful lot of new items uh, a lot of the time, they're simply appended to the end of a growing data set. There's no complex insertion, resorting needed. The data is true forever. In other words, the data goes in and it's immutable. It's as simple as that. Due to the nature of immutable facts, it means errors can be easy to correct because we can return to earlier good facts or simply replace them with new ones with timestamps. It also means historical queries on uh, information in big data are easy to run as the facts are immutable. They don't get changed, deleted or modified. We're going to have a look now at using a graph schema now to help represent big data. Now you should be familiar with graphs, they've been covered in data structures uh, earlier in the course and here's a great example of where the graph data structure or schema can be used. And it's a great way of representing big data. So just a quick recap, um, with graph uh, we have nodes, so that's holding the information. Inside the node we have the properties, now remember the facts have are atomic, they hold a single piece, so each node is holding one piece of information, in this case the name. So that's the property, the name here is Dave, the name here is Sam, and the edges of the graph are the lines here that connect them. Now you've probably guessed if you've been looking at this diagram, a great example of using um, a graph schema to represent big data is the use of social media. Now the amount of connections and interconnections on social media is almost mind-blowing if you start to research it. And all this information needs to be very quickly stored. If you're searching for your friend or a friend of a friend, you know, using your smartphone or your computer, that you can find this information instantly. But the quantity of data being stored by social media applications to keep track of all these links and relationships is huge. If, for example, I wanted to find out all the information on who Craig was friends with or his relations. With a relational database, if the data set was huge, this could be quite complex and overwhelming. Well, here, I can simply go straight to the uh, item Craig, and then I can follow the edges of the graph to see that Craig has a link to James, father of his brother, and a link to Dave, he's a friend, and is married to Sam, for example. Now, this becomes easier again when we start looking at the friends of Craig's friends. So Craig has Sam as a friend and he has three links. Um, or indeed the friends of friends of friends. Stretching outwards using the graph structure is incredibly quick and efficient. If we were doing this type of thing using traditional relationary databases, once the data set gets quite large it would become literally uh, unmanageable. 